Hey, good morning, everybody. Or are we at afternoon yet? Good afternoon, everybody. Rick Sully. And I want to take a few minutes to uh, you know talk to you a little bit. I'm like, I feel like this crazy light we've got here. How's that? All right, that should do the trick. I feel like this is basked in this light. Uh, anyway, I want to wish everyone a great holiday. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your family and friends, and you got everything you wanted. Uh, and I wanted to tell you today, like somebody asked me, you know, over the you know Christmas holiday. Now, how do you come up with your ideas for your talks? And, you know, sometimes they're obvious, you know, leadership, uh, purpose, uh, you know, how to avoid being your own worst enemy or self-sabotage. But, you know, other times it may be a bolt of inspiration. Like uh, when I did the video on my, um, you know, my mother for Mother's Day, it just came to me. I was like, what a great tribute this would be for her. Or I'll see somebody else's video and I'll decide, hey, you know, I like that topic. I just want to put my slant on it based on my experiences. But the video I'm going to do today, uh, you know, came to me in um, sort of an odd way. You know, I did, uh, as you all know, probably some of you are tired of hearing about it, uh, you know, I did my videos on my bullying experiences. And what I did is after I did the videos, I posted these in a lot of different groups. So I went ahead and, um, you know, posted them in, uh, you know, parents of bullying victims, workplace bullying, and so forth. And the reason I did that is I just wanted the word to get out there and maybe make an impact on somebody. So I got one particular comment that really kind of stuck with me, and it, it took everything I had not to respond uh, immediately. But I did the old uh, count to ten, take a deep breath, let it process. It was actually a very complimentary, um, you know, uh, comment. But what really stuck with me is this one sentence this individual said, and I think it's pretty obvious to me that they were probably bullied at some point. And they said, "I don't like the advice you give." about never giving up because it reinforces the idea that the victim must be tough enough to carry burdens on their own. And I understand the concept of what this individual was trying to say, but I cannot disagree more. The, the concept of never giving up is probably the one thing that has driven me more than anything else in my life. And I believe that anybody that subscribes to that philosophy is going to have similar successes. And the one person that comes to mind above everyone else is Winston Churchill. You know, he was asked in an interview at one point, they said, you know, of all the accomplishments in, in your life, Sir Winston, what is the one that sticks with you the most? And he says, and I, I try to do a British accent, but uh, I will spare you. But he says, it's the three years I spent in the eighth grade. And everyone laughed and said, no, you know, Sir, Sir Winston, what are you talking about? You're Prime Minister of England. You, you helped win the war. I mean, all these great things. And he said, it was the three years I spent in the eighth grade because it taught me the greatest lesson of my life, and that is to never give up. And he so believed in his philosophy that he was asked years later to give a commencement speech at Oxford University. He walked up with his cane, top, cat, top hat, and cigar, looked out into the young crowd and said, never give up, and he walked off the stage. How powerful is that? So we all know we shouldn't give up, but what I want to do today is just take a few minutes to help give you some tools that I think will help you not give up, all right? So bear with me, I've got about seven or eight of these I want to walk through, and maybe one of them will hit home with you and help you get over the hump of something you're working on right now. First of all, pump the brakes, all right? It's okay to take a step back, take a deep breath, Reevaluate your plan. Are you really going after the right things? You know, I think there's this, like, I've made this decision, I'm going to do this, and then you're like, you know what, this isn't really what I want to do. Or maybe you just need to take a, you know, process it for a little bit. That's not quitting. That's putting a, hitting the pause button, as I said, pumping the brakes and looking at it and saying, you know what, I'm going to do this differently and I think I'll be able to get there. Number two, sometimes you have to have an honest talk with a man or the woman in the mirror. And and the reason I say that is because, as I mentioned earlier, you need to decide, is this really what I intend to do? Is this really what I'm trying to accomplish? And once you do that and you really have a handle on it, I think you're going to be able to get where you need to go a little bit easier. Be positive. All right, I've done talks about you know, positive mental attitude. I've done talks about positive self-talk. There's entire books written. Tony Robbins has built an entire career on this concept. If you fill your mind with negativity then it's very likely you're going to sabotage your success and you're going to make it very difficult for you to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. And you're going to make it easier for you to give up. So whatever you do, be positive. Next, find a mentor, a role model who's accomplished something amazing or seemingly impossible in their life 
and seek them out. Seek their counsel. I mean, it could be anything. They could have survived cancer. Uh, they could have run a marathon. They could have written a book. Whatever it is you're looking to accomplish, you need to keep this in mind. And you need to work very hard in order to try to achieve these goals. Okay? And they're going to help you because they've gone through some of the same self-doubts and challenges that you've had throughout your life. All right? And they're going to say, hey, try this road. I did what you're doing. I ran into the same obstacles. And this is going to work a little bit better. All right, next, you want to surround yourself with people who care about you, but make sure they are tough. Make sure they are stubborn, resilient people who are not going to quit in the face of adversity. And ask them to call BS on you. I mean, seriously, you know, if it, it, it's okay uh, to have self-doubts. It's okay to have these moments of negativity, but sometimes you need someone to grab you by the shirt and say, dude, enough, all right? Let's go. You can do this, all right? So... Sometimes we, we, we really don't can't have someone that close to us, a friend or a family member, because it'll cause resentment and it'll drive a wedge between us. But someone that's just on the periphery, and maybe it is that mentor I talked about earlier. But whoever it is, they've got to be the ones to say, hey, get back focused. You're on the right track. Don't get discouraged. You can do this. Next, and this is going to sound like it's a little contrary to what I just said, but sometimes it's okay to feel sorry for yourself, to wallow to cry, to curl up in a ball under a blanket and watch Netflix for a couple hours. All right, because the fact of the matter is anybody trying to accomplish anything wonderful and great in this world and you're facing that adversity, if you have the option of just feeling far, sorry for yourself for a day or two or quitting altogether, choose the feeling sorry for yourself. And I go through this myself. You know, I'm trying to build this, this uh, you know, coaching business and I'm trying to motivational speaking and trying to do all these other things. And it's a very slow, drawn out process because I'm doing it in my spare time. And I realize that. And some days I really beat myself up and I get down on myself. And I know a lot of you who are doing this feel the same way. It's okay as long as you pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get back at it the next day. You gotta stay motivated. And how you do that, I don't know, it could be something as simple as listening to a pump-up song, you know, whatever that song might be for you, uh, working out, uh, going for a long walk, or doing something that you view as impossible or you're scared about. It could be skydiving, it could be, I don't know, riding a motorcycle, whatever it is, something that has always seemed impossible to you that you never imagined yourself doing, go and do that because it's going to prove to you that you can accomplish things that are seemingly impossible. All right. The next phase, you got to find out what drives you. What are you really trying to accomplish? Because if it's about money, all right, money is not the right motivator. Money may get you to a certain point, but it's got to be something deeper, something underlying that's got to drive you. And you need to find out what that is. And that goes back to the purpose. But I will tell you, and I, I manage uh, you know, 25 sales reps, five managers, and the one thing that I've figured out is I ask them to rate you know, the, the top 10 motivators, and I give them a list. And near the top of all of them is money. But then as, the, you know, as I start to look at it a little bit closer, I see behaviors that aren't consistent with people who are motivated by money because they're not doing everything possible to be successful to, to make more sales and make more money. So that indicates to me that they haven't found their true motivator or their true purpose. Next, you want to try to establish a work-life balance. All right, this is very easy to say, very difficult to do. Especially if you work from home like I do, you're in your office all the time, and you've got your family right out in the other room. Your instinct is to stay here, stay in front of the, uh, the desk, get things done, and then kind of neglect your family. But your family needs to lift you up. They need to be your energy, your passion, your fire to keep you going during these challenging times. So I always encourage you to maintain that balance. Even it means stepping away from your desk and a project that you might have due. All right? Celebrate the little wins. All right, this is fantastic advice. I even have uh, you know, a file on my computer, and I think I've mentioned this before, where I go in, if I get a positive comment on a video that I did, or someone sends me a private message and says, hey, keep up what you're doing, I really like it, or even if someone verbalizes it to me when we're in person, I will write this down in my notebook, or I'll put it on my file on my computer, and when I'm having one of those bad days, I go back in and I read that file, and you'll be amazing how much of a positive impact that makes in your life. And it doesn't have to be what I'm doing. It could be anything. You could be in sales. You could be in network marketing. You could be a mom. You could be, uh, you know, anything. 
But those little positives, write them down, type them, review them, and feed off of them. It'll make a huge difference. And lastly, stay the course. If what you're doing is truly worth having, and it truly is your purpose, it is going to be difficult to achieve. You're going to face this amazing, tremendous adversity. You're going to feel disappointment. You're going to feel rejection. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel frustration, sadness. And you may feel it almost every day. Not all these emotions, but a few of them. And this above everything else, was causes most people to throw in the towel. But if you follow these steps that I've outlined, I, pr I can't promise you're going to become prime minister, president, or you're going to invent something amazing that's going to change the world, but I promise you'll accomplish wonderful things in your life. You will have a positive impact on so many people, and most importantly, you are going to leave a legacy. Please share the video. Leave your comments of an example, maybe sometime in your life where you didn't quit, you didn't give up. Um, I'd love to hear your story. Love to share it with everyone. Make sure you check out the Sully Says podcast at iTunes. And be sure, if you want to check out all my other videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. Just search Rick Sully on YouTube. I appreciate your time this morning, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day.